That's it. That was a master class. That was a master class. That was a master class. I did not expect him to win in such dominating fashion like that. An absolute stutter. Wait till you see these highlights. The title wow. challenger was a slight wow. Herring took loads of criticism Ooh. coming off. And I'm a Carl Fram thing. Life. God, God, After God. Don't get me wrong, I'm hurting. And COVID and hand injuries that pushed this fight back. Herring and his team came to And the sad thing is, and he just did. I predicted One an uppercut was gonna end him. By Jamel Herring. Ah. Shit. Well, let's talk about it. Carl Frampton is headed into retirement. Is it going to be long term? Is it going to be, I mean, is it going to be forever? Or is he going to take some time off? But the height, the reach, and more importantly, the ever-growing skill level of Jamel Herring is what defeated Carl Frampton. The body work has to be talked about. The poise, the straight left hand. I got to be honest with you. I'm hyped. My blood is boiling. Also, I get to get away from this computer. I've been here since 10 o'clock this morning. My God, 930 actually with the uh, card that was on the zone. So there's so much to talk about, especially now that we know that if Shakur Stevenson wins on June the 12th, sometime later on this year with a crowd, we're going to have Shakur Stevenson, excuse me, Jamel Herring versus Shakur Stevenson. Carl Frampton, if he were to win, it wasn't guaranteed that he was going to retire. And it looks like the, look at Rocky Fielding. I'm shocked. Like, listen, I love the sweetest of the sweet science. And the seated tools that he brought into that ring, like, yo, I didn't... It was the Masayoki Ito fight that was like, all right, I'm never going to doubt this dude no more. I was like, it's something there. What happened with the Oquindo fight? Was it the Oquindo fight? The Oquindo fight, that was some bullshit. But he redeemed himself. You know, you're only as good as your last fight in this sport. I'm waiting for them to show some highlights. I'm not going to let you leave until you get some highlights. Damn it. Legal fair use highlights. But let's listen to the particulars. Please take your time out. Like, subscribe. Did the sound go mute? Why is the sound mute? Not on my end. On their end. Oh, my bad. Is that me? I'm so... Oh, there we are. We're here real time, by the way. No edits. We're waiting for the announcer. As we dude. sit back and take in what we've just watched and what... Those around the globe have watched. That camera is killing me, bro. We'll be getting a word with both fighters in a few moments' time. Damn, Carl. I remember all those years ago I was lobbying for him to get an American now TV deal. And now look at him. Tens of thousands of fans you would be used but to coming off a win like that. Presentation from... Fanless atmosphere at Caesar's Palace. Damn. Giovanni, after one minute 40 of I get to go get some spare round, ribs now. The fight was brought to an end. And therefore, still the WBO Super Featherweight Champion of the World. Also, I'm in therapy. For Jamel Herring. I'm in therapy for uh, PTSD. Just a sublime I would love to know what his triggers are. Defense from Jamel Just, Herring. Ooh, and Tim, I can't even imagine. He was right in the military. The I can't even imagine his triggers. That shit probably. Tess, it was an outstanding Ooh. performance. By probably Joe getting on Aaron. planes, maybe. You know, let me skip, let's give props to Carl Frampton. Let's listen to Sand. Uh, to this fight, tough opponent, tough circumstances as well. Difficult for you to put into words, but put, try and put into words your emotions right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm deeply upset. I, I want nothing more than to dedicate this fight to uh, Billy McKee, my old... Uh, amateur trainer who just recently passed away and um, you know I, I said before that I would, I would retire if, if I lost this fight and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I wanted, it, I wanted to dedicate the fight to Billy McKay and my whole career to my, to my wife and my kids who you know they've made so much sacrifices. I've been away so long I've missed them growing up, my own kids 
and I, I just want to dedicate my uh, my life to my family now. And um, boxing's been good to me. It's also been bad to me. But the last few years with these boys has been the best the best few years of my career. And um, I just want to go home to my beautiful wife and kids. And and that's it. You know, just just dedicate my life to them. Mate, you've given so much to the sport. You've given so much to us. I can see how emotional it is for you. I feel awful to ask, but try and put into words, if you can, for us, what happened Damn. in that fight. Where do you think it went wrong for you? I just got beat by the batter man. You know, I, I really struggled to get, to get inside him. He's, you know, sharp shooting from a distance. Um, perfect game plan, and, and I just I just got perfect. beat. I didn't, you know, zero excuses. I had, a, I had an amazing camp. I was coming into this fight to win it, and I was just, just beaten by the batter man. And I feel like... You should be interviewing the champion. Oh, I, I, I lost the fight. He's a champion. And Listen, you have been a champion all your life. I'm sure Damn. everyone out there and everyone viewing in, you've given so much to this game. Damn. That shit hurt. No matter what, Carl, he's always going to be one of my favorite fighters. I'm just honored to share the ring with him. He, like I said, he's a two-divisional world champ. He's done great in the sport of boxing. And, you know, man, it was just an honor, man. I, and, uh, like I said, just please get home to save your family. God bless you, man. Whatever you would do from here on out. God bless you, Carl. Carl, you've been an absolute Shut ambassador up, for the sport. Really appreciate your time. Home. A true gen of the ring as well. Ladies and gentlemen, Carl Frampton. Carl Frampton, who we'll announced his retirement. You ain't getting away without a few words. Uh, for your new fans here in Dubai, before we talk the fight, let's talk Dubai. How has it been? Oh, it's, it's, been, it's, been, it's been lovely. The people have been so welcoming, uh, you know. I wanted to do more in tour, but I had to take care of business. But I will be back in Dubai. I will come back. I promise you. He got to fly straight home. Back. You just mentioned they're taking care of business. They can't chill uh, a day. Tough opponent, as you just recognized. They're a great ambassador for the sport. But you did take care of business. But I'm Talk not us on through camera, the fight. Man. Um, you know, it, it was just a, an emotional roller coaster just to get here. Um, you know, my last outing wasn't my best. People doubted me. They called me every name in the book. But you know, even with the cut. I wasn't going to give up. I wasn't going to give up. I wasn't going to quit. And like I said, Carl Frampton is just a tremendous champion. Like I said, I've been a fan since day one. Um, you know, like I said, it's tough to see any veteran of the sport go out like that. But like I said, I'm glad he's been able to walk out on his two feet. And, you know, just God blessing his family. But it's been great. It was a great night. I must say how much I've enjoyed hanging around with you and your crew as well. They've brought a whole new sort of sense of enthusiasm to, uh, They're not to used proceedings to that. here. A couple of thank yous. Bo Max screaming. Oh, yeah. Um, I just want to thank my, um, my management, B&B &B Boxing, um, my advisors at MTK Global, my promoter at Top Rank, um, my partner, JC, Jerry, at First to Fight. Um, you know, we're managing fighter. Shout out Micaiah Krebs, Mike Hell Gamble, Matthew, I see you, baby. Appreciate the love. Me say, oh, we're going to we're going to bring it back. First, the fight is on, is ready. And like I say, when when I get back, it's time to go to work. First, the fight, baby. And in terms of what's next, obviously you're going to enjoy this evening. You're going to take things into account. Uh, have you got plans in the pipeline already for the rest of 2021? Um, you know, like I said, um, I, I always wanted to get another title. Yep. Of course, um, this this is, this is a great test here. I know Oscar Valdez has, has expressed interest in, in unifying or fighting. You know, I would love, I would love that. Like I said, pe most people already know I have plans moving up at least. But if that fight's available and and, and they want that fight, let's make it happen. Especially if we can put that lineal title on the line. Doug at Ring TV. You know, I'm talking to you too, Doug. So um, yeah, let's get let's get that lineal title on the line and let's go from there. Listen, you've been an absolute gent. It's been a pleasure to be around as well. And you are still the WBO Super Featherweight Champion of the World. Put your hands together for the one and only Jamel Herring. Jamel Herring defends his WBO championship. A spectacular sixth round. TKO victory. Brings up the name Oscar. I can't clap. I messed my hand up. He would move up. Don't bring up the name Shakur Stevenson, his good friend, who said he would win today. All right, take us through it, Timmy. Well, Jamal Herring started off, you know, beautiful left hand straight down the pipe. You know, you know, Frampton was going to try to come forward, try to maul. He went him. down in slow motion. He stayed under control, stayed patient, used his reach on he the outside. He went down in slow Seven motion. Seven inches he had, reached five inches he had in height, and eventually caught him with the uppercut. When you're fighting a smaller man and you're the bigger man, the uppercut oh, is Oh, no, this is so sad. I didn't want to see and this, man. Jamal Herring knew that. And he placed a beautiful uppercut. But it happens. And a nice finish right there from the champion. 
retaining his title. 35 years old, Jamel Herring. That left uppercut. Whew. So listen, if you don't know, Oscar Valdez defeated um, Miguel Burchell. Was that about a couple of months ago? To become the WBC champion. That was considered an upset. Tank Davis is doing some bullshit out there still in the streets. He's supposed to be fighting Mario Barrios um, later on. Hold on, they're showing more highlights. Carl Frampton had his spots, but Jamel Herring overall dominated. You know, lack of defense. Like, like Frampton was eating everything that was being thrown at his face. You can tell, though, Fram um, Herring was having issues with the cut. But anyway, moving on. So... Jamel Herring obviously is going to look for a big money fight, but he's going to be obligated to fight the winner of Shakura Stevenson versus Jeremiah and Jeremiah Naka Nakathila. How do you say his name? Which is going to be uh, June, what is that? They say the 12th. But to not fight the mandatory, he can fight Oscar Valdez to unify. These guys right here, Rockamoff, who I covered his last fight, didn't look impressive, is going to face Ogabo for the vacant IBF title. Damn, Carl. Carl went down in slow motion, bro. Damn, Carl. That was ugly. That was ugly. But, yo, I'm impressed to the point where, listen. Yo, I'm about to say, don't make me say it. Don't make me say he can beat like this. Excuse me. I'm not comfortable saying it yet. I'm not comfortable saying it yet. I'm going to stay on the fence. But the guy there for tonight is the tools. Don't think about the fact that Carl Frampton is five foot five on a good day. But the tools that he displayed tonight, I oh, don't know. Oh, no, bro. That body work got me impressed. Now, in regards to the IBF guys, he can beat Ogawa. He can beat, he can beat a Rockamoff. I can say confidently that I have Jamel Herring beating whoever will hold the IBF championship if it's one of them. Tank Davis, I don't know. Put it this way, when I'm ranking him 130, he's impressing me. The Oquindo fight, you know how they say that fighters, um, by the way, I'm looking forward to this. You know how they say um, some fighters like rock, like they fight to the to the challenge. I think this is the case with Jamal Herring. Also, by the way, the event as a whole. I've been watching boxing since 10 a.m. I've been here. I did a little walk, take my dog around a little thing, take a piss. I took a shower, you know, smoked hella weed, and I'm gonna go ahead and say that that production quality was shit. They can do better than that. I mean, the F PBC on Fox um, layout for their shows with the faux wallpaper shit. Look, listen, this shit was some bullshit for a championship fight of this nature in Dubai of all places. I thought it was going to be some old flashing lights and musical numbers and shit, kind of like the um, Akhmadaliev Madrimov card earlier. But this was just like they was in a tent. Now, I'm, I'm sure they probably had the red carpet rolled out for them. You know, I'm sure that all the amenities and everything in a tent was nice. But still, nonetheless, it was a tent. And it looked cheesy. It looked like some old NTK global event. Like, it was nothing real special about it. You know? Just my little rant. I'm out of here. I'm T-Street Controversy with FightView360.com. I can't wait to go get some motherfucking fresh hair. And I gotta stop cussing. Please take your time out. Like. Subscribe.